Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and today I just want to show you a new piece of gear DIY that we put together for an upcoming winter backpacking trip we've got planned. We're going to the Adirondacks, a little snow camping up in New York. It's right on the tail end of winter, but up in the Adirondacks it should be pretty good. We should have plenty of snow, so we're going to bring a sled. I've got my friend Mike coming. Those of you who have been asking, where's Mike? He is coming out on a trip. He only has a weekend available so we're not going to make it to Michigan one of these years we will but we're going to go up to the Adirondacks and my friend Frank who's been in uh, my two Iceland videos and my Scandinavian Sweden and Norway video he's actually coming get this for his first backpacking trip ever he's been wanting to go on a trip and um, he's crazy enough to have said he wants to go on our winter trip and we were crazy enough to say yes I know from my trips with Frank before that he's got the right mentality based on the crazy stuff we went through on our uh, Scandinavian travels. So we're just going to go for it. But I don't know. What do you guys think about that? If you had a friend who's never been backpacking and he asked to go on his first trip in the winter, what would you say? I'd be interested to hear. But that's a whole other subject. I'll focus on the sled. But that trip is coming up, um, and I'll post a video once uh, we do the trip, and we'll show this sled in action. But back to the sled here. So two years ago, two seasons ago, something like that, um, Mike and I went up to New Hampshire and we did a base camp type of thing where we went like a eh, two miles or less into the woods and we brought this sled. So I have used this sled before, but back then it was completely different. It was just the sled. There was no poles, which we're going to get into, and there were no fins, which are these plates installed here. I'll flip it over and show you in a little bit. It was just the sled and we had some rope tied to it and it worked great. We um, put all our stuff on it. We went into the woods, had a great time. But this year, I was just curious, so I started looking at quote-unquote real Polk sleds just to see what they look like. Two things that struck me at first. Uh, one, they can be really expensive, like 150 180 bucks plus, which is why I ended up going the DIY route. But I also noticed right away, poles. And I was like, wow, why had I never thought of that before? Because with the rope, it was cool and we could pull it and everything, but on downhill sections, especially when we're going up and down in that New Hampshire or Adirondacks terrain, the sled would oftentimes skitter off course, which is what the rigidity of these poles should help with, as well as the fins. Um, and then another big thing was a lot of times it would come flying down behind the person pulling it and bang into their ankles, their snowshoes, all that. In our case, we had a piece of rope on the back, and I, whoever was not pulling would be in the back holding onto the rope to keep it from hitting Mike. But with this here, we got poles. Now, I'll tell you real quick, too. I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here and show you exactly how to make this. If you're, I'm going to give you a quick look. If you're interested in that, here's what I did. I went and I googled DIY polk sled, and the first hit that came up, the number one result, I believe, was actually a blog post of some sort from REI. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. I thought the same thing. If REI has a blog post, then rightfully so, but they're probably going to be showing their products or at least products they sell. But I clicked on it, and much to my happy surprise, it was just a list of all standard things you could get from a hardware store, and it laid out how to make it. So click that link if you want to see uh, all the actual parts and everything. And I'll just show you what I ended up with because with most DIY projects, you know, you're not going to make it exactly the same because of the parts that you can find and everything. So first things first, we got the poles and it's just two pieces of five foot, half inch PVC 40. And you can see that it comes out there and it attaches to either a hip belt or your pack. Now I used these carabiners here in the REI article. It was actually set up for a separate uh, hip belt made out of two inch webbing and some clevis pins that look, it looked kind of cool. It rotated on the side of you. That looked neat and maybe someday we'll get to trying that. But in our case, um, what we did on that first trip, we're going to do again, which is a lot of times people go out, they have their own personal polk sled and they carry it behind them and it has all their personal gear on it. For Mike and I, and what we're going to do with Frank as well on this trip is we each have still our own backpack with all of our personal gear or a lot of it. And then on the sled is going to be our communal gear. So just one sled for the group and we take turns pulling it. And in our case, we actually have a big old storage bin that we put on there. We fill it with like cooking gear and stuff for the group and everything like that. And when we get to camp, we can use that as um, basically a little pedestal for our stove and food prep and all that stuff. 
but that's why in my case I just put the carabiners on here and this will clip right to the hip belt on our packs. A downside of that I guess would be the fact that a little more cumbersome to unclip this from the hip belt pockets if you want to actually move free of the sled or anything like that but I think we'll be okay. We're only going to go in like a mile or two at the most, most likely a mile because of the terrain which will be good for Frank on his first trip too. And we're going to set up a base camp. The next day we're going to go up to a summit with no sled or packs or anything. But that's what that is. Running through it is a length of paracord. So I looped it around on there, if you can see that, and tied it there. So the carabiner has somewhere to go. The rope goes through it and down to the sled. And I've seen some designs where there's actually like a bolt almost like a hinge set up with the pole directly connected to the sled. For this design, the rope comes down and there's actually a loop on the end and I have two holes drilled about two inches apart. Loop goes in underneath there, comes back up through the top on both sides and then in the middle I have a piece of one inch webbing here and temporarily I've knotted it but eventually, actually coming in the mail tomorrow from Dutchberg Gear, I ordered some stuff and I got a little one inch buckle for like 70 cents what that allows me to do, the reason for that is, it's not permanently attached is one thing. So once I get the buckle, it'll be real easy to unbuckle this strap and then each pole can come off, which might make it easier for transport and whatnot. Or to convert it just back to a regular sled. Another advantage of that is, especially when I get the buckle on here, is that I can adjust the tension and pull these two lengths of rope closer, tighter together, and adjust the distance of the poles to the sled and keep that nice and tight. In the middle, I think in the, in the REI post they didn't really go over this or maybe I missed it, but it looked like they had just a rubber band. I did some shock cord and a little adjuster there like you might have the pull tab on your uh, coat or something like that. And that allows me to adjust the tension in that. Keeps those two together but still gives it some give. And that's the pole system. Now, when I first started looking these up, I was like, oh, poles, so that's the way to go. And I have read that I guess that might be considered a real polk sled is when it has the poles. But, and you guys can weigh in and know more than I, if that's true or not. But I did find out pretty quickly from looking at forums and stuff that it, it's not necessarily the end-all be-all to have poles. A lot of guys still like ropes, and some say there's just different situations for each. For the rope setup, like Mike and I did on our first trip, the general consensus seems to be pretty popular that that's good for flat to slightly hilly terrain, and the poles seem to be recommended most for steep and more rugged, aggressive terrain like we're going to be doing, and like we did that first trip. But it's still up to you, but that's that. That was real cheap, like three bucks for that piece of PVC pipe. In the REI article, they had some quarter inch uh, hose that they put on, rubber hose, I couldn't find that at my store, so I just have, I believe these are like, what's it called? A brass craft dishwasher branch connector. All right, there you go. Anyway, I think you could probably get away without that, but it does make a nice connection there and doesn't have the PVC directly rubbing against the uh, sled. Moving past the poles, you can see here, this is where the cost went up from like 10 bucks to a little more because you have to buy some aluminum. So in my case, all I needed was a couple six inch pieces, but I could only get four foot pieces. So I have enough to make multiple sleds, but I did spend about 20 bucks on that aluminum. On here, I have two just flat bar aluminum pieces that I cut down to six inches with some wing nuts and some quarter inch, I think five eighth inch long bolts. And then underneath, there you go, there's the bottom there. And this is just some angled, right angle aluminum pieces and then I just cut them down. Let me pull it up so you can see more. So I cut those down and then cut 45 degree angles on them both and then took a file and just smoothed it out to try to reduce the drag, make it nice. And the reason for the wing nuts brings up another thing. The wing nuts will allow us to take these off so they're not permanently attached. Yeah, it probably won't be great in the winter to fiddle with little quarter inch bolts and wing nuts, but they are removable and the reason for that is if the terrain doesn't dictate that we really need the fins or we just don't find that it's working for us in our conditions or whatever, we can take them off. So for instance, I've seen some debate over this, but uh, I've had people say that they don't like to use them on the uphills, the fins, but they do like them on the downhills and then some people say vice versa. I don't know if any of you are more experienced, let me know. 
Are these more useful, the fins going uphill versus downhill, whatever the case may be? For us, I think we're just going to leave them on the whole time, most likely, because it's our first experience with it, and it'll give us a good idea of how they work, and then maybe on future trips we can adjust from there. I did put the fins about three quarter of the way back. In our case, this is a tapered sled. I should point out any sled should do, but ideally the higher walls on the side, the better. This is probably on the low end. It's about three and a half inches at the most deep, maybe closer to three in some spots. And I've seen recommendations of five inches and up, depending on the sled you can get. Mike just found this sled at the hardware store for you know a couple bucks, so he grabbed it and it worked pretty good. And remember in our case, our main vessel is gonna be up here and it's gonna be a big old storage bin hard walled plastic so everything will be safe and dry in there we'll throw some extra stuff in here but ideally the higher walls would keep snow from getting in there weighing it down getting your stuff wet etc another thing you could do and we do have holes drilled all along here on the blog post from REI they get super fancy and put grommets didn't bother with that these holes are actually from last time we looped rope through here to tie down the um, gear that we had on here I was going to get fancy like they did in the article and permanently run some paracord through here with little loops sticking up at each hole, but because we're a little unorthodox with the storage container set up, I'm going to wait until the three of us get together and rig it up the way we want to, but that's definitely an option. You could put permanent paracord gear loops on here. I got plenty left over. I only used about 15 feet of my paracord to make the poles on there, so I got mm, 35 feet left that I can use for gear ties. And that's pretty much it. I would say for well under 50 bucks, probably close to 30 if you find a sled on sale and just do the poles or find the correct amount of aluminum, uh, you could make one of these too and have some fun out there. So I just wanted to share it with people and then let you know that video will be coming. And then for any of you newer to the channel or just haven't seen it, but you are interested in sleds, feel free to check out, I'll link it right up top here that uh, video that Mike and I did sled camping. We had like tons of snow, it was a lot of fun. We went in, uh, it was a great time with the sled. So you can see how it works with rope. And then within the next uh, couple weeks, put out a new video and we'll show how it works with the poles. So that's it, just wanted to share that with you. Again, anybody who has feedback, who knows a little more about this than me, please feel free to share with myself as well as other viewers interested in the comment section, any of your experiences with this kind of setup or things I could do better, maybe some tips for when we get in the woods. And uh, yeah, wish us luck as we take our friend backpacking for the first time in deep snow. But yeah, that's it. So till next time, I'm Syntax77 and you have fun out there.